Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Requested video here for you today. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it, okay? So I have been asked my opinion uh, to do a review of my opinion on a video that I did over a year ago, which was talking about the top three sustainable birds on my farm, or top three birds for sustainability. And actually, I think I threw out four on there, but. So the first breed that I talked about was Buff Orpingtons. The second one was, uh, or well, what was Black Australorps, Buff Orpingtons, Sex Lynx, and Leghorns. So the point of this video, or the question is, or was, do you still feel the same? I need advice, what do you think? So, I'm going to tell you, my opinion has changed. So let me tell you right now, when you are looking to add chickens to your farm, there's two things you need to consider. Number one, no, what works for your area? Because what works for me or how things have performed here does not mean that's going to be the, what, how it performs for you on your farm. Okay, you may live in Montana, you may live in Ontario, you could live in Bora Bora for all I know. What works for the mountaintop here in East Tennessee does not mean it's going to work for you. I can only give you my experience, my opinion, based on what we do and my, you know, what's going on around here. The next thing you have to go is, go with is, what are my goals? What are your goals? Are you just trying to start out with a small flock of backyard chickens to gain experience? Are you trying to, you know, really get into selling eggs? Are you wanting something that's dual purpose that gives you, your family, eggs, maybe a little egg cell on the side, yet you're gonna have some great meat birds? Are you just wanting meat birds? What, what do you want? What is your goal? Now, when you talk about sustainability also, are you talking about sustainability that works today? Or are you talking about sustainability that works in an off-grid SHTF scenario? That's another whole ball game, people. I mean, we could go five ways with this. So let's go to the nuts and bolts. What am I talking about? In my video, I talked about the black Australorp. Not adding more black Aussies here. Beautiful bird, pretty friendly. Um, <laughs> we're not talking about you. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna be honest with you, compared to several other breeds around here, compared to the Buffs and compared to my Welsomers and several breeds and Speckled Sussex and other things that I have, even Easter Eggers, I've been disappointed in the Black Australorp for here. Now that could be the stock that I bought, that could be a fluke, that could be a lot of other things. But you're asking my, my opinion, so I'm gonna tell you. My experience is I'm not gonna expand on the black Australorps at this time. I would probably want to go for, if I'm going for a dark hen, instead I'm gonna go for a Jersey Giant. Sorry, I just wanna tell you. Egg production less, yes. Friendliness is probably gonna, I'm hoping is gonna be a little bit more. Um, broodiness hasn't happened here, folks. Now, as soon as I say this tonight, I'll have a broody. You wait and watch. Go with your gut, what's available to you, and what works for people around you in your area. I'm not saying I don't like them. I'm just saying they haven't exactly lived up to the overall expectation that I expected in, by, in comparison to other breeds. The next one that I talked about was Buff Orpingtons. Guys, I love my Buff Orpingtons so much that I've expanded an entire coop over here and run, and we're gonna continue to work with them. I have uh, incubated them, I, I, and, and uh, we're expanding on them exclusively. They're not mixing with other breeds. I am very particular about my Buff Orpingtons. They are laying eggs like crazy. I have not culled or butchered any of them to date, um, but I can tell you by size, I'm not sure I would be disappointed. Okay, friendliness, egg production, and broodiness. If that's all you get, I have been very, very happy. Well, hello, I love you, Mr. Peaches. The next bird that I talked about, which brought a lot of comments, is I mentioned sex links. Okay, well, let me tell you why I mentioned sex links. Sex links work very well here for different reasons. Okay, my sex links are all hens. They lay beautiful eggs for me. My farm runs on egg production, not meat production. Okay, so when you come to Appalachia's Homestead and you're wanting a lot of advice on meat birds, I'm not your number one, I'm not going to be your top expert on that because I go for the egg layers and I treat, I, you know, my hens are treated, don't, 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 are treated like little queens around here, okay? I don't, I, I don't have hens here to raise for one year and then cull them, okay? You know this, that's, that's just what we do here. My sex links of all types 
have been wonderful. I have had many different breeds and I enjoy them. They're very sustainable for us here today. They pay for my farm. They help pay for my farm. So if you're trying to get into egg production because you sell eggs um, and, and they pay your feed bill every month like they do here for me, then I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna go for some sex links. The sex links that I enjoy the most are, well, I've enjoyed different ones. Oh my goodness. I love, uh, um, the red production are my least favorite. I love the Golden Comets. They're eggs, you can't beat them if you try. Um, I enjoy the Black Stars. I really enjoy black stars. Have you got a hairball? Um, I enjoy the black stars. I enjoy um, or the black sex links. I enjoy the golden comets. I have the amber links. I love them. So we've had different breeds. That works for sustainability of today. They are friendly. They are productive. They have overall been very hardy, especially especially the black stars. If I were to expand on some birds for me and my sustainability, whether it's today in terms of my eggs, um, what works today, or if it's for an off-grid situation, I'm gonna tell you, a lot of folks are familiar with the, who's, who doesn't love a leghorn, okay? Um, if, you can, if you can house them. Um, but the Anconas, you need to look at the Anconas. I have lots of photos of the Anconas. They're very much like a leghorn, probably a little bit less on the egg production, but they forage like crazy here. That is good. A little bit less egg production, but I don't have to feed them as much. Kind of works out. If I am going to expand on anything besides my buff Orpingtons, I'm going with the White Rocks. Point blank, gonna tell you, totally Miss Homestead lady, influenced, I've seen it. Her white rocks are incredible. She absolutely loves them. She actually prefers them over the Buff Orpingtons. She says, I can get incredible eggs from them. They are very friendly hens. The meat production from these birds, if I choose, is incredible. Now she will warn you that the roosters can be a little bit fierce. The Buff Orpington rooster, in her opinion, and in my opinion, um, I will tell you is they're super friendly. That doesn't mean you won't have one out there that's gonna flog you, okay? There's always an exception to the rule. Would you get up here on my lap? But um, I will tell you, I am definitely, I'm not expanding on the black Australorps. I'm going to expand on white rocks. True, true, tried and true, old school, mountaintop chicken. I, I have a lot of different breeds here. I love Easter Eggers. I love my black copper morans. I love the Welsomers. I love my speckled Sussex. I mean, we have Brahmas. We have lots of different chickens here that we love. But I will tell you, as time rolls forward, you do tend to streamline what's working for you, your farm, and what works best for your sustainability of today. And if God forbid anything down the road. I hope this video helps you out. I hope it answered your questions. I know everybody has, again, different opinions because based on different experiences. I'm not going for, other than my silkies, no, I'm not going to be expanding really a whole lot. Folks are trying to, I, I, I have cream leg bars over here. I love my cream leg bars. They're not producing right now. Same age as the Buff Orpingtons. Nope. I know it's winter, I know it's weather, but my point is, is my buffs are pushing through. They're doing their thing, okay? Um, black copper morans, I might expand on them, but honestly, they just don't compare to the others. Um, so you have to understand what you're looking for, what your goals are. Are you just looking for a couple of dozen eggs a week? Are you looking for some pretty hens to, 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 to you know, to raise with your children, um, you know, are you, what are your goals always? If you like this video, like and subscribe. <laughs> the mascots here for sure, aren't you? Love you. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Hope this video helps you out. Feel free to comment below with, uh, you know, let us know what works for you. What hens and things have you found to be just your best? Some folks will tell you they love Buckeyes. Thought about expanding there. I think that would be a cool addition. Um, I will not expand on Rhode Island Reds. Don't find them to be super friendly. I think they're productive, but they're not friendly. If you can deal with less, you know, less friendly and more production and a possible flogging rooster, hey, old school, tried and true. Barred rocks are excellent. Um, I love the hens. I love barred rock hens. And one of my best roosters ever, 
hard rock. So you just have to be willing to try different things, talk to people in your area, and we're finally gonna pray. Y'all take care out there. You're so crazy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs>